Hey chess lovers, welcome back to the chess yard. This is Dehre Pagga and today I'll be playing the 5 minute blitz with 0 seconds increment on Lee Chess. And during the game, I'll try to be as instructive as possible like always, making sure that there's something to be taken away as a learning from the game that helps you improve your game to the next level. Now before we start off with the game, I request you to subscribe to my channel and press on the bell icon so that you don't miss out on any of the videos that I'm posting up daily without a miss. So yeah, let's quickly start off with the game and see how it goes. Which pieces we get? Got the white pieces. I'll play the London system setup. Which starts off with d4, bishop on f4, and then pawn to e3. These are standard moves that you can play in any kind of an order. Okay, open softening a pawn there. I, I can I can actually take that, and then develop my knight. He's pushing spawn, spawn forward. I'll just play c3. Um, can pin the knight. Okay, he removes the pin by castling. We'll take up the other knight now. Okay, he's trying to push us back. Let's go here. Attacking the h7. Um, we can improve the position of our pieces, of course. Let's go with h4. Let's go for the attack. Oh, did we miss something there? I can save my bishop. But then he pushes the pawn forward and we are losing on another piece. Okay. Let's sack. The, so one of our pieces is going for sure. So let's take something and then give. Okay, he takes. I can just safeguard my bishop for now. Can save my knight in the next move. This, this fork is happening now quite often. I have to be careful with this. I, I don't realize that the rook is coming there and that can affect. Okay, let's take. Takes with the pawn. What's the plan here? This looks bad already. If pawn forward, probably the only move right now. What he does next can be bishop pinning the knight. Oh, he's pinning the other knight there. Can I play pawn forward? Ignoring his threat. I'm just trying to pressurize him on the king side. Okay, a couple of things that can be done here is attack, first of all, the bishop. Probably he'll take, oh, he takes that instead, spoiling my castling, which is okay. Just move aside. Can we make some attack over here? That's the whole intent now. Okay, gets the bishop in between. That's nasty. Let's get the queen. If we sack our knight, we can push the pawn, but nothing beyond that. Can we do some sneaky mate via g7? It will be one question. His rook is hanging anyways. Let's safeguard that for now. He can attack the queen too. Oh, he doesn't. Mm -hmm. Let's exchange the knight. No, not, not the great idea, but point is I can take with the bishop. Bishop can block his movement as well. Okay, I can take with my queen here. Okay, takes a pawn there. What have we got? Uh, 
Um, let's go here. Plans of taking this pawn, maybe. If he pushes the pawn forward, he can take this pawn back. He gives a check instead. I can play the pawn forward here. Not real bad. We can still win this. Just need to be a bit accurate. Can have some moves like queen coming here. Or rook to c8 is as well good. Of course with the bishop, he's trying to safeguard his bishop there. Let's take this on. Moves like queen over here will be threatening mate. He gets the rook in between now. Let's go with the queen. We are planning queen to g7 or h8 both work wonderfully well he defends but he'll lose a piece there we have potentially another check coming and that would lead to a queen as well because he has to move this way because the bishop is eyeing this diagonal so i see a good comeback maybe how are they stopping this? I'm, I'm still wondering. You didn't figure that out. Queen's on the board and that's made. There's always a comeback and this was one of them. He lost a piece initially and we just screwed him eventually. Let's quickly analyze the game once uh, and see the computer lines, what we did wrong. So d4, f6, uh, bishop to f6, knight to f4, e6. He plays c5 now. We take on the pawn. Oh, I should have developed my knight rather. Taking is bad. Okay, noticed. Develop the knight. He plays d5. He plays c3. He gets the knight out. I pin the knight. Castles. Developing the knight to d2. I have to take the knight here. But I retrieve with my bishop. He plays b5 how to capitalize it okay going for knight exchange or playing a4 i played h4 rather trying to go for his pieces over there I, and i pushed the pawn forward next move without noticing that the rook has now come and that can probably lead to e5 next that's what happens in the game and it's a losing position now because i'm going to lose a piece for sure so okay this was even further bad yes i was thinking of pinning the knight but what are that because he will probably push the pawn forward i cannot do much about the situation as well so that's not a very good move as well so i took on the pawn there at least opening up the edge file he takes with the knight i bring the bishop back saving it takes on the pawn we exchange stuff and then here I, of course i cannot take and defending this is also quite impossible. If I castle, the threat was after I castle, he takes. And if I take back, he takes with the bishop or maybe even rook so that he has a discover attack in the next move. Rook doesn't work actually because I can have bishop and once he goes back, he has to go, go back somewhere, saving his rook and then he loses the bishop. So taking with the rook doesn't work, but yes, of course, he, if after a take, he takes with the bishop. That's a check, and he wins extra pawn there as well. And he can take a knight as well. If I take with this knight, he can probably proceed with his other pieces now. It's quite open position. King is in the corner, and it's going to be never safe. So could have went further wrong, but instead in the game, I chose to play the pawn forward to e4. Uh, the opponent responds with bishop uh, to b4, pinning this knight over here, so that he can take on the pawn. And I was thinking that he's trying to exchange the stuff so that 
So I was not uh, bothered about it because I can take back with the knight. Uh, if he takes, I can take with the knight. And after that, I can defend the pawn as well, which was being attacked by the rook. But I went with h6 and he defends that, defends the pawn on g7 by playing forward. This always is a weakening because this triangle becomes a good target uh, area. And that's what I tried to exploit in the remaining game. I just tried to make pieces uh, have a better square so that I can attack the diagonal. He takes on the pawn. I save my king. No other option there. He attacks the queen now with the bishop. I got the queen on d3, attacking his rook. He defends. Uh, and he's, the main idea here probably was if, if I do something else, say bring my rook over to c5, what he can do here is uh, probably offer me bishop exchange. And after the exchange happens, he's pretty much happy uh, with the exchange and he can probably take on the pawn as well in the next move. Uh, so in the game, I took on the knight first. He takes my other knight, which I take back with the queen. He gets uh, another pawn there by taking on g2. I just align my pieces over there. He ignores the threat uh, and just challenges my king with the bishop. I play pawn to f3. And he brings the bishop back now to f5. Uh, I take on the pawn there. He gets the other rook. I thought he could have actually even played bishop over here, giving me a check so that I have to move either side of the board. If I go over here, probably queen comes in and that can be deadly too. Uh, if I go to the opposite side, then also he can play probably rook here and discovered attacks are on the way. So this could have been a better way to proceed from his side. But rather, he chose to get the other rook as well into the picture. I went on with queen to e5 because my only hope was to attack and get some attack going on that, uh, at the end of the diagonal. Uh, and that's what he sees and probably just gets the queen in between so that we can exchange stuff. Uh, he, he lost a piece over there, but he was pretty much reluctant to do anything about it. Uh, rather, proceed with the rook there on c2. Now, here, of course, he can save this game quite easily just by playing the king to h7. And now I cannot proceed with the pawn. Uh, and to mate him from there, I need to get one of my rooks onto the empty file, go over there, and then proceed for the mate, which is probably very unlikely in this kind of game where the opponent is already cruising. But he misses that move and just uh, goes for the rook alignment so that he can probably give me a check another and just keep pushing me and then probably exchange the knight the rooks or take some extra pawn though the pawn is guarded with the bishop if you see in the reverse diagonal so he just ignored the threat and i played the pawn to h7 that's the now there's only move as we saw in the game he has to play f8 and queen comes and it's mate because the diagonal is controlling everything and the queen is controlling the rank so everything is sorted we win a good game and it was the last game uh, in the beginning itself. If you see a uh, man's were piece down, it's tough to make a comeback, but we did. So never resign and keep learning. I hope you like the video. Do let me know your feedback. Do like the video as well on the YouTube and subscribe to the channel. Press on the bell icon so that you don't miss out on any of the videos and keep supporting and sharing the content because I'm putting in a lot of hard work and I hope you like it. Thank you so much for your time. Take care. Bye-bye.